ഹലോ ഗുഡ് ഈവനിംഗ് ഓക്കെ സോ ലെറ്റ്സ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അവർ ടുഡേ സെഷൻ So, uh, in our last lecture, what we studied, we studied the electric field lines and after that I discussed a charge particle in an external electric field. Okay. And after that, uh, I did uh, some numerical based on charge particle in an external electric field. So, now today I will start a new topic that is your torque. So, when we put a dipole. in some external electric field then that dipole experienced a torque that we will calculate in today's lecture okay but uh, before going to the torque first i will discuss what is the cross product of two vectors how to find cross product of two vectors so that you already studied in your previous class that how to find cross product of two vectors okay uh, but i will uh, today i will give you a quick revision of Uh, cross product of two vectors okay so uh, so that you can easily understand what is a torque there uh, they actually we will use the cross product of two vectors the cross product of two vectors is a mathematical uh, mathematical concept okay but uh, the use of this mathematical concept basically is in uh, physics in 11th you studied torque Uh, that's due to mechanical uh, forces the torque you studied in your previous class and the torque here you will study that is due to some electric field okay so put the heading that is cross product cross product put the heading cross product cross product okay so cross product so uh, there are two ways we multiply vectors uh, uh, one method is we call dot product that i will discuss later and the another method we call cross product so uh, what we did in cross product we basically uh, do multiplication of two vectors in cross product we will find we will do basically multiplication of multiplication of two vectors multiplication of two vectors first point okay yeah. and when we take cross product of two vectors then what happened the resultant will be a vector quantity okay uh, when there are two meth- method to find multiplication of uh, vectors yeah there are two method to do multiplication of vectors the one is cross product and the other another one is dot product in cross product when we take multiplication of two vectors then the resultant is also a vector quantity so another point which is we says that result is a the resultant is your the result is a vector vector quantity okay quantity so uh, these two point that multi uh, in cross product we find multiplication of two vectors and the resultant is a vector quantity suppose i take a vector a suppose i take a vector a in this direction this is a vector a okay and there is another vector which is vector b which is in in this direction this is your vector b and the angle between these two vector is suppose theta is suppose theta so in this case the cross product of these two vector can be defined as vector a cross vector b that is equal to that is equal to ab 
the magnitude of vector a that is a the magnitude of vector b that is b and into the sine of angle between them sine theta and n cap n cap what is n cap here n cap is the direction of uh, the direction of the resultant vector if we take the cross product of these two vector a cross b then the resultant will also be a vector quantity okay and the direction is along the perpendicular or you can say that the direction we find the direction of a cross b through right hand thumb rule that i will discuss uh, just now so this is a formula this is the mathematical formula to find cross product of two vectors a cross b is equals to ab sin theta into n cap okay this is your expression and here the direction of a cross b is perpendicular to both the vector a and vector b here the direction the direction of a cross b is perpendicular to both vector a and b both vector a and vector b okay so that is basically definition of this cross product of two vectors okay now uh, let me show you um, how you uh, how you can understand this vector okay so if uh, these two vectors suppose they are making angle suppose pi by 2 okay uh, if i consider a vector a and vector b the angle between these two vector is suppose pi by 2 suppose this is a vector a okay that is in your i cap direction vector a which is in i cap yani x direction and there is another vector b that is your j cap direction or you can say along y axis j cap if you take cross product of these two vector then what you will get if you if you take cross product of these two vector means a cross b that is equal to a i cap cross b j cap that is unit vector along uh, x axis and y axis okay so that will give you a b here i cross j i cross j so you can say that the magnitude of i cap is 1 a magnitude of j cap is again 1 the magnitude of unit vector that is i cap equal to j cap that is equal to 1 okay and if you take cross product the angle is your sin theta it means uh, the angle is pi by 2 okay and n cap here n cap what will be the n cap i cross j this will give you a unit vector that is perpendicular to both the plane that is k cap so here i can draw this k cap in your z axis ij your uh, this the magnitude is ab and that's along k cap is it clear now if i take multiplication of this a cross b and if a is perpendicular to b then in that case the resultant will be ab and that's perpendicular to both the vector which is a and b so here the answer you will get that is equal to ab k cap ab k cap okay ab k cap so the formula is if you multiply two vectors that is a cross b is your ab sin theta and the resultant will be the perpendicular both the uh, both the vector the perpendicular both the vector okay and uh, what is the direction if i take a cross b if i take a cross b if i take a cross b then the uh, method is uh, the right hand thumb rule says put uh, put your palm along one vector and rotate along second vector then thumb will give you the direction of your resultant vector okay a cross b so if put your palm around a and rotate it along b then the direction 
resultant direction will give you the direction of a cross b okay if i take b, b cross a so b cross a then the direction is your here outward okay so you can uh, calculate the direction by yourself okay okay suppose i take a paper this uh, sheet of paper okay so suppose this vector is a this is your vector a this is your vector a along this point this is a vector a okay and here the vector is another vector is b okay so if i take rotation means from vector a to b then the direction is towards myself and if i take a to b then direction is your towards yourself means outward direction and here the direction is inward direction okay so in this way we find the direction of cross product of the two vectors and the resultant will always be the perpendicular to the plane of both the vector which is a or vector b okay is it clear or you have doubt you have to do this uh, uh, right hand thumb rule by yourself or there is another method that we call the screw uh, method just put put your pen okay and rotate it from vector a to vector b if if the pen is going inward then the direction is inward and if you put from b to a then the direction is your outward okay the direction is your outward so this is the way to find the direction of uh, cross product of two vector okay and uh, here you can if you rotate vector if you take rotation from if you find b cross a then in that case the direction is clockwise okay and if you take the a cross b then the direction is anti clockwise okay anti clockwise okay so uh, some some expressions for unit vectors first note it down note it down this small definition of cross product then i will discuss some cross product of unit vectors okay i can write here somewhere here okay yeah so here i am writing the expression of cross product so uh, unit vector suppose first note it down then i will discuss it sir can you explain again how to use right hand thumb rule how to use right hand thumb okay so suppose uh, this is a vector okay see it this is a vector okay along this axis and this is another vector these are two vectors okay these are two vectors so you have to what you have to do you have to put your palm in one one vector suppose you are calculating this cross this this cross this okay you have to put your palm and rotate it from one vector to another vector then thumb will give you the direction of third vector okay vector a cross vector b then thumb is the direction of uh, uh, resultant and if i if you if you are calculating this b cross a then put b cross a then in this case thumb is toward myself okay is or you can also find this like this uh, suppose this is like two vectors so a cross b the direction is upward and b cross a the direction is down again okay? suppose this black is vector a and this blue is vector b so if you find a cross b then the direction is upward and b cross a the direction is down okay in this way you can use just simple very simple put the palm along one vector and rotate it towards another vector then thumb will give you the direction of your uh, cross product of these two vector okay and that is perpendicular to the plane of these two vector that is perpendicular to the plane of these two vectors this is all about cross product of two vectors is it clear now yes sir okay so next uh, next is um, how to find the uh, cross product of two unit vectors so if i take i cross j so we know there are three unit vectors that is i cap j cap and k cap okay 
so clockwise we take positive so clockwise means i to j j to k and k to i okay so if i take i cross j cap that will give you k cap another if i take j cross i j j k that will give you i is a cyclic these are cyclic so k cap cross i cap that will give you j cap this is your positive if your cycle is clockwise then you will get positive result clockwise then it's a positive and if you are taking anti clockwise means j cross i cap means j cross i cap this will give you a minus k cap so in this case where uh, the direction you are taking it's anti clockwise anti clockwise na z to i z to y if you are going z to y then the direction is your anti clockwise na okay is anti clockwise so in that case you you consider negative anti clockwise so your uh, the result will be your negative the negative direction anti clockwise in that case you will get negative so as j cross i that is minus k cap so k cross j cap that is minus i cap and i cap cross k cap i cap cross k cap that is again negative and k cross j that is again negative okay so the anti clockwise if you consider the cross of uh, unit vectors that is your minus j okay so this is all about uh, some very basic rules for uh, to take cross product okay i think you already done this cross product in your previous classes but i just give you a quick revision so that we can easily understand what is talk cross product we use where uh, where we have to define something related to rotation something related to rotation rotation in physics in your previous class uh, you you saw the cross product in your angular momentum expression in your torque expression okay so where uh, you see <coughs> the rotation rotation then in that case uh, we have to we use basically the this cross product note it down then i will discuss the next uh, Uh, the topic that is main topic that is related to physics this is not related to physics this is basic mathematics how to find the cross product of two vectors write it down then i will discuss some other topic Okay should i go to the next slide yes sir okay so next uh, put the heading that is talk yeah talk what is talk okay so what is torque so torque is a rotational analogy of 
uh, force. Okay, so uh, for force, uh, you basically define uh, force by simple F is equals to ma mass into acceleration, or you can define force in terms of momentum. Uh, but where two forces act, two forces act in opposite direction, then in that case, uh, you will experience a torque. Okay. Suppose I, uh, if I apply two opposite force over this pen, one force is along this direction and one force is along this direction. Then what happens? This will start rotating. Okay. If I apply force in opposite direction, then there is no motion. But what happens if I don't apply force in exactly opposite direction, but one in this direction and another is in that direction downward? Then what happens? This will start rotating along this axis. So whenever you see a rotation, then in that case, two forces are acting, are uh, acting in opposite direction. Okay. Whenever you rotate the handle of your bicycle or a scooter, then what happened? You apply two force in opposite direction, one in this direction and another in this direction. So these two equal and opposite force form rotation. In that case, you experience a torque. You experience a torque. Okay, so for torque, you require couple of force. You require couple of force. One force is required for translation motion, but for rotation, you require couple of force, means at least two force you require for rotation. Okay, and that uh, we called torque. Okay, so torque is nothing but it's a rotation and log of force. It's a rotational. Rotational analog of force. Okay. Of force. Or we also call this torque as couple of force. Okay. So couple of force means couple of force. That means. Uh, two equal and opposite forces are acting on a body. Two equal and opposite forces, opposite forces are acting on a body, are acting on a body. So how many forces are required for translation motion, Minashi? Yes, sir. How many, uh, how many forces are required for translation motion? Two. No, no, for translation motion, simple translation motion, linear motion. One. One force required for translation. Suppose I put the, if I apply force uh, in simple one direction, then it will move in a particular direction. But if I apply two equal and opposite force, okay, then the body will start rotating. Uh, rotating. Okay, for rotation, you require two uh, two forces in opposite directions. Okay, so that's why I, I I wrote that two equal and opposite forces are acting on a body, and in that case, the body will experience a torque. Okay, or the body will start rotating. So let me draw a. Uh, let me draw a figure so that uh, I can give a more clear explanation. Suppose uh, this is line of action. Okay, suppose this is a line of action. And there is another, a force is acting in this direction. A force is acting in this direction. Okay. And another force is acting in this direction. Another force is acting in this direction. Okay. So these are two forces which are acting in opposite direction. Okay.
so in this case you can find in this case you can uh, find uh, the torque suppose the distance between these two forces is a small d that is your small d okay that is the distance between these two force and here this is the line of first force and this is the line of second force these are perpendicular to this axis which we which is d okay so this is the line of action this is the line of action of force line of action of force that is your cap f okay and this is another line of action of force line of action of force of force okay so what happened when these two these uh, equal and opposite force these are in opposite direction na? one force is in this direction another force is in this direction then what happened this body will start rotating this will start rotating this will start rotating because two forces are, are acting equal and opposite direction then what happened this body will start rotating okay so you can consider one force as a negative force and another force as a positive force then this uh, or this one is positive and this one is negative so in this case the body will start rotating and due to this rotation you can find the torque and the definition of this torque is the definition of this torque is magnitude of one of magnitude of force the torque is defined as the magnitude of force magnitude of force into perpendicular distance between line of action perpendicular distance between line of action this is the definition of this force torque is equals to magnitude of force into perpendicular distance between line of action okay line of action so here you uh, you can find the torque torque is defined as the expression of torque is like this tau torque is equals to here the magnitude of force is capital f this into the perpendicular distance between line of action is perpendicular distance is small d this is your torque f into d the product of force into perpendicular distance from line of action is defined as this torque the product theek hai is it okay torque is equals to f into d so you can find the unit unit is your uh, newton meter the unit of torque is newton meter note it down the definition of this torque this uh, definition and this explanation you already studied in class 11 uh, the 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 concept the topic which is related to your syllabus your course is electric dipole in uniform electric field okay that's the topic which is related to your actually course uh, the cross product and torque is is a basic revision of your previous uh, class now i will come to the actual point actual uh, derivation that can be asked in your examination but first note it down this torque
Okay, have you guys noted down? Should I go to the next class? Next slide? Yes, sir. Okay. So the next uh, topic, that's actually the important topic. Put the heading that electric dipole in uniform electric field. Electric dipole. Electric dipole. in uniform electric field uniform electric field okay uh, i already discussed to you what is the electric dipole okay and we will put that electric dipole in uniform electric field so uh, shafullah can you tell me what is the electric dipole Huh? Uh, can, I, uh, can you repeat again? Uh, what is an electric dipole? In a system of two charges, there be a, a system of two charges that is separated from a very, very small distance. distance. Okay. So that is electric dipole. And Hishima, how you how how to define electric dipole moment? Ishma, can you hear me? Yes, sir. How, how, how to define electric dipole moment? The product of magnitude of um, charge into separation distance. Yeah, that's correct. So P is equals to Q into D in this way. Uh, basically, we use uh, 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 separation distance as 2D, but it's okay. So here we define charge into separation distance as a dipole moment, and the dipole is a system of two charges which are in, uh, which are in uh, separated by very small distance, and the charges must be opposite uh, opposite uh, charges. Okay. So uh, let me put a dipole in some electric external. Okay. You already know uh, that. What is the behavior of a charge in some external electric field? Uh, I discussed in my previous lecture that if we put positive or negative charge in some external electric field, then they will experience a force. Positive charge experience a force in the same direction of electric field, and negative charge experience a force in the opposite to the direction of electric field. Okay, that I already discussed. And today I will put the system of these two charges in external electric field. Okay, so first let me draw a uniform electric field. Then I will put an electric dipole in that uniform electric field. So uh, this is our uniform electric field. It's a uniform electric field. Okay. And I have to put a dipole in this electric field. Now I'm considering a dipole in this field. Suppose this is a dipole. Okay. This is our dipole. One end of this dipole is, has charge. Uh, suppose one end has a charge. It's a negative Q charge. This end is a negative Q charge. And this end has a charge, which is positive Q charge. This is your dipole, okay? This is your positive Q charge, and this is your negative Q charge, and this is your separation distance. That is basically we consider 2A or 2D. Okay, here we will consider that is 2A, twice of A. So uh, the first point is the positive Q charge will experience a force. The positive Q charge will experience a force, and I am the positive charge experience a force, same in the direction of electric field. And in this case, this will experience a force, this will experience a force that is in this direction, that is F plus Q. Okay, and this force experienced by positive charge is same in the direction of electric field. And how much this force is? 
How much this force is? Hmm? F minus Q. Ah, that is uh, F plus plus of Q E. Charge into electric field. Okay, charge into electric field, and uh, the negative Q charge will experience a force in opposite to the direction of the electric field. Okay, the negative Q charge will experience a force in opposite to the direction of electric field. This this uh, topic I already uh, discussed in my previous class. I briefly discuss. If somebody have any problem, then uh, he or she can ask me now. Or you can see my uh, previous lecture on the YouTube. Okay, uh, so you can find all the like my lectures on this uh, uh, YouTube. Okay, uh, they are they they already shared you where you can find the lectures, the recording lectures. Okay, so here the uh, force that is experienced by negative Q charge F of minus Q. That is equal to minus Q. Okay, so these two forces are have equal strength. Okay, but they are opposite in nature. Okay, they are opposite, but their strength is equal, plus Q E or minus Q. So here you can see that these two forces form a couple of force. These two forces form a couple of force. So here you can find the net force on a dipole. So net force on a dipole. The net force on a dipole. How much the net force is? The net force is capital F. That is force due to this positive Q charge plus the force due to negative Q charge. So Minashi, what is the net force on a dipole? In this case, the net force is positive Q plus F negative Q. Ah, then what is it? Uh, what is the value? That is plus Q E and minus Q E. So in this case, that is your zero. So the net force over a dipole is zero. The net force of, of a dipole is zero. So it. What is the mean of uh, this net force? If this net force is zero, the uh, it means the dipole is in translation equilibrium that it's not moving there is no motion no translation motion okay there is no motion translation motion there is no translation motion means it is fixed fixed uh, it's not moving it's like it's fixed in this point and two forces are acting and net force is zero so uh, the translation equilibrium condition happen here translational equilibrium equilibrium okay two equal and opposite forces are acting uh, so that's why there is a translation equilibrium and these two uh, forces that is qe and minus qe these two forces forms couple of force these two forces form couple of force and where the couple of force acts, the body experiences a torque. Means there is no translation motion, but there is some rotational motion due to this couple of force. Okay, due to this couple of force. The rotational means if I apply a force over pen in this direction, okay, and if I apply a force in this direction, then it will not move, but it will start rotating. It will start rotating if I apply a force at this end and at this end, here I'm applying force in upward direction and here I'm applying force in downward direction. Then what happened? It will not move. It will not move, but it will start rotating. Okay. It is not any rotational equilibrium, but it's in translation equilibrium. Okay. So, uh, and here this plus QE and minus QE makes a couple, makes a couple of force, couple of force. And due to this force, the body will experience a torque. The body will experience a torque. How much uh, the body will experience a torque? That I'm going to discuss. 
okay so let me draw again this torque figure okay so that we can is we can calculate the torque okay. so this is your uh, this is your uh, dipole let me again draw your dipole so this is your dipole this is your dipole okay this is a dipole and the separation between these two charges is your two way this is your separation that is two way okay and at this end a force is acting at this end how much that force is that force is minus qe and one force is acting at this point that force is plus q e okay and what happened the line of action of this minus q e force is like this one here this is the line of action of this force okay okay so uh, you can find the torque torque says torque says that magnitude of force magnitude of force force into perpendicular distance distance here the magnitude of force what is the magnitude of force yeah you can find the magnitude you can see magnitude of force is qe not positive not negative only magnitude that is qe what is the perpendicular distance this is a point this is a point okay so what is perpendicular distance here you can see the perpendicular distance is this one this one is perpendicular distance but we don't know how much it is we only know this two way so what we can do we can consider a angle theta which is this dipole making with electric field so this is angle theta if this angle is theta and this is twice a so we can find this perpendicular distance and how much this distance is you can find the sin theta sin theta uh, suppose i put a here b here and n here that's your normal so in this case what is the value of this sin theta sin theta is your bn upon ab perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so here bn divided by ab from here you can find this perpendicular distance that is bn is equals to ab sin theta okay and ab is your twice of a so this distance will be 2a sin theta okay is it okay for you all of you um suppose this di dipole is taking angle theta then what happened this is 2a and this angle is theta so this distance is twice a sin theta perpendicular distance as i discussed in the definition of torque that the force into perpendicular distance here force is qe and the perpendicular distance is twice of a sin theta okay so here the magnitude of force is qe and perpendicular distance is your that is bn the perpendicular distance is your bn so the value of torque is qe qe into 2a sin theta qe into 2a sin theta okay and uh, uh, can you tell me uh, shafulla is there any dipole moment in this expression any hidden dipole moment in this expression yes sir ha huh? what is that uh, 2a q yeah it's a q into 2a so here you can see this q into 2a is a dipole moment so we can rewrite this expression in terms of dipole moment so here you can find this torque as pe sin theta this torque as pe sin theta okay and what is pe sin theta as i discussed in my uh, starting of this lecture that a cross b is ab sin theta so here we can write torque in terms of vector 
that is torque is your in terms of vector this torque is equal to p cross e so the cross product of dipole moment electric field will give you the torque torque is equals to p cross e okay here the direction of dipole moment from negative to positive suppose this is your electric field this is your electric field this is your electric field okay and here if i put a dipole moment a dipole which is here so this is dipole direction of vector p negative to positive and this is direction of electric field and this is angle theta so here p cross e will give you the torque p cross e will give you the torque i will discuss it again in briefly but first note it down uh, this part then i will discuss some uh, special points related to this stuff but first note it down these two slide first note it down this is a important expression the torque is equals to p cross then i will is explain uh, again i will discuss the diagram Should I change the slide, or you are still writing? Everyone, hello. Are you guys writing or taking notes, or should I scroll it down? to the next slide
Shafula, yes, are you done? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm scrolling down so that you can take another part of these notes. Yeah. Okay. This diagram is important, uh, another one, uh, geometrical figure. Okay. If you guys have any doubt, then you can ask with me. So I will again explain this diagram. This diagram in which I find the perpendicular distance that is two way sine theta. Okay. So the length of the dipole is two way, and we just use Pythagoras or uh, a right angle triangle trigonometric properties that sine theta is equals to. Here we calculate the sine theta. Uh, sine theta is equal to this uh, perpendicular distance that is bn divided by this uh, your hypotenuse that is ab. So from here we can easily find this bn. We have to find this bn which is perpendicular distance and that bn is equals to ab sine theta. So it's easy. AB is 2A sine theta, that's your perpendicular distance and multiply it by with one of four, that is QE, you will get the torque that is PE sine theta. And, uh, and this PE sine theta, you replace this PE sine theta by the cross product of two vectors, that is P cross E. And in this way, we can find the torque. Okay. So what happened? This torque what what this torque will do what this torque will do so this torque will try to rotate the dipole okay uh, first note it down then i will discuss note it down and tell me uh, that you completed this small derivation that is torque is equals to p cross then i will discuss the physical meaning means uh, what is going here what this electric field do with this dipole when you put it with a certain angle. Remember this expression, this torque is equals to P cross E, that's, it's an important expression. Okay. Note it down the complete derivation and take a look of this derivation. If, have, if you have any doubt, then ask. Okay, I'm scrolling down so that I can discuss the uh, meaning, physical meaning. Means what is the physics here? Okay, so this is all about some mathematical terms. Now I'm going to discuss the expression. Okay, so what we did first, I draw a, a uniform electric field. Suppose this is our uniform electric field. This is our uniform electric field. And in this uniform electric field, electric field, what I did, I put a dipole with some angle theta. Suppose I put a dipole here. Okay. So in this case, this is one end of dipole. That is your minus Q charge. This is another end of dipole. This has plus Q charge. This plus Q charge will experience a force in the same direction of electric field. And what is the, di the direction of this dipole moment? The direction is of this dipole moment is from minus Q to plus Q. That is like in this direction. This is the direction of dipole moment. And here the direction of electric field is somewhere here. This is the direction of electric field. And as I discussed, the angle between uh, this electric field and the dipole is theta. So this angle is theta. This angle is theta. So here you can see that two vectors, P cross E. How I define torque? Torque is equals to P 
cross E. Okay. Now you can apply the right hand thumb rule. Thumb right hand thumb rule says put your palm along your first vector P cross E. P cross E. Okay. P cross E. So what happened? This torque will try to rotate, try to align this dipole in the direction of this electric field. Okay, is it clear that uh, this is the direction of electric field? This is the direction of electric field. And you put a dipole, you put a dipole, something like this dipole in this electric field. Then this electric field, field, what this will do, this electric field will try to rotate in the direction of electric field. It will try to align this dipole in the direction of electric field. Okay, suppose this is dipole and if I apply electric field, then it will try to align in this direction. Okay. Okay, you can see that if I apply electric field, then it will try to rotate. It will try to rotate in this direction. Okay. It will start rotating. It will start rotating. Okay. This is your P, this is your E. So P cross E is your, your give you the rotation of uh, this uh, dipole. So you can write a statement that this torque will try, this torque will try to rotate the dipole. We'll try to rotate the dipole to align it in the direction of field to align to align in the direction of to align it in the direction of field in the direction of field. Okay. So that's a uh, point. Okay, you can also say that this dipole can rotate, this electric field can rotate this dipole in, in this direction. Okay, this dipole, this electric field can rotate this dipole in this direction means suppose if I apply electric field, then it again go complete, not like this one, it goes like this one direction. Okay. But always remember the dipole will rotate that particular direction in which the rotation angle is small. Okay. It will take, if I apply electric field, then this angle is small in comparison to this angle. Okay. So another point is that dipole will rotate. Another point is dipole will rotate, rotate by a smaller angle, by a smaller angle to align with field, to align with field. Okay, these two important point. So suppose if I consider a dipole, suppose I consider a dipole. Yeah, suppose this is our field. And if I put a dipole, this is our dipole. So this is your dipole. Okay. So what happened in this case, the field will try to rotate it and what is this uh, direction will of rotation it will in clockwise direction clockwise direction because dipole will rotate by smaller angle to align with the field and here the smaller angle is in clockwise direction okay and another example if i consider an electric field and in this case if i put a dipole in this direction this is our dipole so what, what happened in this case? Can you tell me? Uh, Mirashi, can you tell me in this direction of rotation is clockwise or anti-clockwise? Anti-clockwise. Yeah, exactly. It's anti-clockwise because the smaller angle is in anti-clockwise. So here the direct rotation is anti-clockwise. 
anti clockwise this is all about the direction is how the dipole will rotate in its stern electric field so this is all about the torque experienced by a dipole when you put that dipole in some external electric field what it will do it will start rotating and that electric field will try to rotate that dipole in the direction to align in the direction of electric field to align in the direction of electric field and dipole will rotate by smaller angle if uh, smaller angle um maybe it's it will rotate it in the clockwise or anti clockwise direction it depends in which direction you put that dipole in the external electric field okay note it down then i will give you a a numerical based on this uh, torque torque experienced by electric dipole so here we use cross product p cross e because here the rotation okay here the rotation means uh, the cross product of two vectors p cross e will give you the torque note it down then we will do a problem and then i will discuss some special cases some special cases about rotation means uh in which direction you will put the dipole so that it will experience maximum or minimum torque but first note down these two important point and draw these diagrams okay so let me give you a small numerical based on this uh, electric dipole concept uh, electric dipole in external electric field concept so the problem is the question an electric dipole an electric dipole is placed an electric dipole is placed in uniform electric field electric field as shown in figure as shown in figure calculate torque on dipole torque on dipole okay so let me draw a figure these are some external electric field and the field is uniform here i am discussing only uniform electric field in non uniform electric field the result are different that i will discuss later but here i am just considering electric field and this in this electric field there is a, a dipole that dipole is having this is your dipole okay and this dipole is making angle theta with the external electric field and the one end has a charge minus 2 milli coulomb and the another one has charge that is plus 2 milli coulomb and the separation distance between these two charges is 3 mm 3 mm is the separation in this case you have to find the torque what is the value of torque what is the value of this torque find the magnitude of this torque
try to solve this problem then i will give you the exact answer but first try to solve by yourself and send me the answer in in chat box so that i can have idea that who is able to solve this problem send me the answer try to solve it Okay, one more thing I have to give you in this problem. Here, theta is actually uh, the angle 60. So that you will get the exact calculation. Here, theta is given as 60 degree. So that uh, you can get the exact number of torque. Also give me the answer that the direction of this torque is clockwise or anti-clockwise. It will rotate the dipole in clockwise or anti-clockwise. Somebody has sent me the answer. Is it that much tough? Shafala, are you solving this question?
Hello. Safal, are you solving this question? No, sir, I'm not done yet. Okay, and Minashi? Sir. Are you solving this problem? I'm trying to do. Okay, you are trying to do. And Minashi? Oh, Hishima? So I'm trying, but I'm not okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to solve this problem. So if you have a problem, then tell me. I thought that you guys are sol are uh, solving this problem. Now let me solve this problem. So here, the torque. Uh, you have to find the torque. So first, the expression of the torque is torque is nothing but is a P cross E, P cross E, okay. So the magnitude of this torque, if I talk magnitude, then this is P E sine theta, okay. That is P cross E and if I consider only magnitude, then this is equal to P E sine theta, A B sine theta. What is the value of P here? First, you have to find what is the value of dipole moment. Then you have to find the, the, the value of this field. And after that, you have to consider this sine theta. Okay. So this is your field. field. Okay. So here the value of P. First, find where the value of P. So first time calculating the P. P is nothing but, E is nothing but, uh, it's a Q that is 2 micro coulomb, uh, milli coulomb into uh, Q into the separation distance nearly is a three millimeter. Convert it, so two into 10 raised the power minus three into three into 10 raised the power minus three meter or here Coulomb. So that will give you six into 10 raised the power six Coulomb meter, that is your P. So now as angle is theta, uh, so P, the value of P is 6 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. We don't know what is E and the value of sine theta that is sine 60 degree. So here the value of this torque is equal to uh, 6 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 into sine 60 degrees under root 3 by 2 into your electric field. So 2, 3 is a 6. So that is equal to 3 under root 3 into 10 raised the power minus 6 into electric field. So this is your answer. If I put a electric field of 10 Newton per Coulomb, okay, if I consider the electric field of 10 Newton per Coulomb, so in that case, your answer will be 3 root 3 into 10 raised the power minus 6 into 10. That will be 3 root 3 into 10 raised the power minus 6 into 10. That will give you 3 root 3 into 10 raised the power minus 5. And uh, unit of this torque, unit is, uh, is Newton per Coulomb. Okay, it's a Newton meter. It's a Newton meter. I'm writing directly, it's a Newton meter. Okay, so this is the value of your torque. Now tell me what is the direction of the rotation means what is the direction of this torque? Is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? The direction of this torque is clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise. Yeah, clockwise. So Cephala is correct. He is give the answer. So the rotation is clockwise. It will the electric field will try to rotate this dipole in in this direction. In this direction means clockwise. So the direction of torque is clockwise. Put it down. This is the standard problem related to torque. This type of problem can be asked in your examination related to your uh, the concept of torque. So how did you get the electric field less than? Yeah, I just use the electric field as 10 Newton per Coulomb. You can use 20 or 30. In that case, your result will get very. But I'm just, I just taken a simple electric field. 
10 newton per coulomb. I can choose this electric field as 10 newton per coulomb. This is a random electric field that I choose. Okay. But the point is it's a uniform. It means 10 newton per coulomb electric field is a uniform electric field. Uh, can we take any electric field of our choice? You can take any electric field, but if the electric field is fixed in the equation, then you have to use that electric field. Okay, sir. If your exam any examination they fix, uh, they gave you the electric field 20 newton per coulomb, then you have to use that 20 newton per coulomb. Okay. Okay, sir. So consider here the electric field as 10 newton per coulomb. That will be easy. That will be uh, uh, more useful for this problem. Okay. So remember this formula for of torque is torque is equals to P cross E that is P E sin theta. P cross E is equals to P E sin theta. This is the import, important formula. And the magnitude is P E sin theta means A cross B is A B sin theta. Note it down this problem, then I will discuss some special cases related to dipole moment or uh, electric dipole in field, external field. Okay, have you guys done? Yes. Sir. Okay, so in my next slide, I am going to discuss some special cases. Put the heading that is special cases. That is your special cases. special cases okay so what are these special cases so if dipole moment the first case is the first case is if the dipole moment is parallel to the electric field if the electric dipole moment electric dipole moment is parallel to electric field. To electric field. Okay, so in this case, what happened? Uh, let me draw electric field. This is suppose electric field our uniform electric field is like in this one, 
this is our uniform electric field equal in distance and direction okay so in this uh, electric field our dipole is parallel to this electric field means no angle no it's not making any angle with the field this is your electric field okay yeah this is your electric field blue color is your electric field this is your electric field factor e and this yellow color is your dipole moment vector p okay so here in this case you can see that there is angle between electric field and dipole moment is zero this is zero okay so here theta is zero degree theta is zero degree so if theta is zero degree so the formula is torque is equals to p e sin theta and if theta is equals to 0 then what is your torque nishima what is the value of torque when theta is 0 what is the value of torque when theta is 0 nishima can you tell me it will be 0 yeah it will be 0 because it's a pe sin 0 and in that case the torque is 0 okay the torque is zero what is the meaning of the torque is zero the torque the meaning of torque is zero that there is no rotational motion the uh, the uh, the dipole will fix in its equilibrium position okay and this is we call condition of stable equilibrium this is we call condition of stable equilibrium stable equilibrium okay that is we called condition of stable equilibrium okay what is this stable equilibrium okay what is this stable equilibrium then first uh, discuss what is unstable equilibrium then i will discuss both the thing okay is it clear that when the electric dipole is parallel to the external electric field in that case it will experience no torque means in this case torque will zero but there is another case in which torque is also zero then what is the difference between these two cases the what is the another case in which the torque is zero so next second point second point is uh, let me draw another field another uniform field this is an again our another uh, field yeah that is again our uniform field and in this case again i put a dipole but what i did this time i will consider a dipole i will consider a dipole in the opposite direction of the field suppose i put my di dipole somewhere here okay so here the electric field is in this direction and your dipole is opposite to the field so what will be the angle of theta in this case what is the angle theta in this case this is your e this is your p hmm. Vinashi, can you tell me what is the value of theta in this case? One eighty. One eighty degrees. Uh, theta. And what is the value of tau? Tau is equal to means torque that is equal to PE sine one eighty. And what is the value of one eighty degree? Maziha, can you tell me what is the value of one eighty degree? Sine one eighty degree. What is the value? Sine pi. Masiya, can you tell me? Okay, Shafulla, do you know what is the value of sine pi? Ah, huh? sine pi, sine one eighty degree. It's also zero. It's also zero. So in this case, torque is again zero. 
okay torque is again zero so that is we called condition of unstable equilibrium that is the condition let me use different color that is a condition of unstable equilibrium first note it down then i will discuss more briefly then what is this stable or unstable equilibrium there are two cases in first case the uh, dipole is parallel to the electric field and that case we call condition of stable equilibrium and the second case in which the dipole is anti parallel to the electric field applied electric field that we call condition of uh, unstable equilibrium and what is the difference between this uh, stable and unstable equilibrium but first note it down these two cases first note it down these two cases then i will discuss what is the meaning of this stable and unstable equilibrium okay now let me discuss what is stable and unstable equilibrium so suppose this is your uh, dipole okay and it's parallel to this electric field this parallel to electric suppose this dipole is parallel to electric field okay this is your electric field uniform electric field and this is your dipole it's parallel to the direction of dipole moment is parallel so what happen if i apply a very small force over this dipole suppose i apply a very small the force over this dipole then what happen this dipole will move and come back to its original initial position okay when i will apply a small force then it will move slightly and come back to its initial position okay that's we call uh, stable equilibrium that in this case the dipole is stable okay but if dipole is opposite to the direction of the electric field suppose this is your dipole okay and this is a electric field these two are basically opposite to each other perpendicular to each other okay so in this case what happen when i apply a small force when i apply a very small force then what happen it will come back to the direction of electric field that is we called condition of unstable equilibrium you can also understand this concept concept by another example of stable and unstable equilibrium suppose mm, uh, suppose uh, uh, stable equilibrium means suppose i put a bowl a bowl suppose i consider a bowl and in this bowl i put a very small ball okay so if i apply a very small force over this ball then ball will go somewhere here somewhere here and come back to its position okay when you apply a very small force then it will move slightly and come back to initial position it is in stable equilibrium okay but there is another example that is unstable means if i consider a ball a bowl 
a curve in this direction. And in this case, if I put a ball somewhere top here, it's also in a stable position. But if I apply a very small force, then it will go somewhere like very easily, or it will go in this direction. Okay. So it's in unstable equilibrium, is a small amount of force will disturb its position and it will never back to its initial position. Same as in dipole, when dipole is in unstable equilibrium, when you apply a very small force, then it will never come back to its initial position. It will get aligned with the direction of electric field. Okay. So that is condition of stable and unstable equilibrium. Is it clear to everyone? Is it clear or any doubt? Yes or no? Shafala, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. And you, Minashi? Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. So these two cases in which the dipole is along the electric field and opposite to the electric field. And the third case in which the, elect the dipole is perpendicular to the electric the third case third case says that let me draw again this uh, uniform electric field that is suppose this is one and another and one more it's a uh, it's look like a uniform electric field and in this case, our dipole is perpendicular to this field. Our dipole is perpendicular to this field. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's parallel. Yeah. The dipole is perpendicular to the Okay. The direction of electric field is somewhere here. And the direction of your dipole movement is somewhere here. This is your electric field. And this is your dipole. Now, uh, the dipole, A, this is your 90 degree. Here, the dipole movement, the dipole moment is perpendicular to the electric field. Okay. So in this case, the torque is again, same formula P E sine theta. And here theta is your pi by two or 90 degree. So here you can find this torque as PE sine pi by two, and that is equal to torque is equals to P into E. That is the maximum torque experienced by a dipole. Maximum torque. Okay, maximum torque. So that is torque is equals to PE. Note it down. This is the maximum torque experienced by e. I electric dipole because sine pi by 2 has the maximum value that is 1. The maximum value of sine is at sine pi by 2 that is 1. So the maximum value a dipole can experience a torque is PE means dipole moment into electric field. These three cases are special cases related to your electric dipole uh, moment when you put that in external electric field. Note it down. So this is all about uh, 
uh, electric dipole in external electric field or you can say torque experienced by an electric dipole so today i finish this topic which is uh, electric dipole in some external field or torque okay uh, so first we derive we find the equation of uh, torque first we started our lecture with cross product how we find the cross product of two vector that is a cross b is equals to ab sin theta and the per the the resultant of a cross b is perpendicular to the plane of two vectors that is a cross b and the mathematical expression of a cross b is ab sin theta okay and after that we studied the derivation we find the torque the torque is pe sin theta that is p cross e where p is the electric dipole moment and e is the electric field so electric with the torque experienced by an electric dipole in some uh, uniform electric field is torque is equals to p cross e okay first important thing is that and another thing is that there are three special cases in which first we put the electric dipole in along the direction of electric field in that case the torque is zero and again we put that dipole in opposite to the direction of electric field and in the also uh, that case the torque is zero the first case in which the dipole is along the electric field is we called stable equilibrium and the case in which the electric dipole is opposite to the electric field is called uh, unstable equilibrium and uh, another special case in which we put the dipole perpendicular to the, to the electric field and in that case the torque is pe that's the maximum torque experienced by a dipole in external electric field okay and we also did some problems based on this uh, dipole moment in external field means we find torque okay so today i am stopping here uh, at this point okay the next lecture will be based on uh, electric flux electric flux is the uh, next topic that i will discuss and electric flux is the last topic of your chapter number 1 so we are very close to finish our chapter number 1 is there any question query related to today's topic then you can ask and so that we can close our session at this point if any doubt any question any query then you can ask with me any question minashi yes rishima no sir saifulla Awesome. Okay, Maziha. Okay. Okay, so I am closing this session. I will start new topic from my next such next class. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay welcome Thank you sir Okay welcome Shafulla